everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 163. Today I'm going to talk about Al Rashid. Uh, this is a game that was released in Essen 2012. A uh, relatively small print run for this game. I don't know that it's really made its way over to the States uh, in any kind of force at this point. I have seen it appear on some of the, you know, the import uh, websites like Game Surplus um, and another one, I can't remember. It was most recently on Game Surplus, but now it's sold out again. Uh, so this is a game plays two to five players. Takes place during sort of the height of the uh, Muslim Empire with the caliphs and all those things like that, and it has some very interesting things in it for a Euro game. It has combat, uh, which I'll just tell you now is well done. I like it. You know, I was a little bit hesitant about that. You know, because it's a lot of times when you sort of start to blend economics and worker placement and Euro kind of things with combat, you know, that doesn't always work out so great. And it's got a, it's basically a worker placement game, but it does have a very nice twist on it. So it is something I think a little bit new uh, with that, you know, that type of mechanic. And it's got a lot of variable powers that you can get. And that's another thing I'm a fan of. So you can actually capture, uh, you'll be capturing resources and things like that. Uh, but you'll also be able to sort of get the favor of different uh, leaders and guilds and things like that. And different people and sort of add that to your, your sort of family of workers that you're using. Uh, so let's take a quick look at it and see how it plays, and then I'll come back and tell you what I think. Okay, so I've got the game board set up here for a uh, four- and five-player game. And I will say it right off the bat, the game says it plays two to five. I would say this is really should be only a four- or a five-player game to get the real effect out of it. Now, three's okay, and I haven't tried it with two, and I really don't want to try it with two, but you really need sort of the, you know, the amount of players to... To fill up the board and have the amount of competition that you really want to make the game more enjoyable, I think. So let's take a quick high-level overview of what's going on on the board, and I'll kind of zoom in the different areas and talk about what you're going to do on your turn, etc. So this large portion of the board down here, this map here, are different areas that you're going to go to. You're going to place workers out here, and you're going to try to gather different resources. So if we take a look here, you can see here you've got the outline of the different types of resources. So every round, these are going to be replenished with this exact configuration of these different types of resources here. So the players are going to start with different types of workers and you'll be able to acquire more of these as the game goes on through some of the spaces up there. Uh, so first you've got the Pasha here and he's basically worth five points of dominance. Then you've got the Merchant here, this is a littler guy here, he's worth three. And then these Sages here, these discs are worth one. So if I place a guy out here, I can place a Pasha here and so if all that was there was my Pasha and the blue player's merchant, then I'm going to win the dominance because I've got more points worth of stuff here. Now when you place uh, your, your workers out here, you can only place either one Pasha or one merchant. So if I came in here later, I couldn't like place you know, another merchant like that. But I could come along later if I wanted to and place one of the sage discs underneath uh, you know, one of these to kind of build up. So if there were two Pashas, whoever had the more sages underneath there would basically win here and get sort of first choice of the uh, goods here. And if there's still a tie, basically whoever placed there first uh, is going to get the choice. And that works also as well for the guild, different guild houses there at the top. So real simply, players are going to go around placing their workers and their different types of workers out on the different areas of the board. And then in turn order, we're going to resolve different areas. Now this is a very interesting part of the idea is let's say I'm the yellow player here and what I want to do actually is I want to resolve this area even though I don't have any of my workers in there. As long as I still got workers out somewhere, let's say I just had a sage over here or something, then I can pick any area I want to resolve first and then the next player will pick an area to resolve and I'll resolve. So you, there's a little bit of screwage here uh, that can happen and players need to be aware of uh, because you could basically activate something first and then basically that player was counting on getting resources, say, from somewhere else to be able to do the action up here or something. And now they don't because you've activated it first there. So players really need to keep that in mind. And that becomes a huge part of the metagame and the, and the worker placement aspect of this. It's very interesting. I've not seen anything quite like it. And I think it's very effective and, and it works well. And it makes the game very interesting in that respect. So let's get into a little bit more detail in the different areas and the different things and the different guilds and then move on. Now before we talk about the different uh, uh, resources and the different areas of the board, let's take a look at this little chart here. So you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five. So the way you pay for things in this game is paying with different types of resources. So if you have one resource you pay, you get one dollar. It's worth one gold worth of stuff. Where you see if you're down here with five, you get 15. So that you want to get a variety 
of things here. And you can see the game's played over five rounds, and then there's the turn order here, which is activated by the palace, we'll just talk about in a minute. But when, when I was saying before about how you can activate different areas of the board, when you resolve this and then change turn order, then the going into the next round, then that is going to affect the order immediately of how those are resolved in the next round of res resolving these spaces. So this is a good little spot here. I'll talk about it a little bit more in detail, but you can do it defensively. If you see that, you know, Billy over there is going to activate this before you have a chance to get the resources, you can kind of go play around here with the turn order in that way. So let's take a look here and resolve one of these areas here for resources. Now you will see here a little combat icon. I'll talk about combat in a second, but it's possible that there are pirates here that you'll have to defend. I'll talk about that in just a second. But let's say for argument's sake the combat was resolved that there's no combat there. And we have first, second, and third, white, green, and blue. How is this going to resolve? Now the first place player, uh, he gets to take basically two choices. He can choose all of a resource and take all of those, or he can choose three different resources and take those. So in this case, the white player could take all of the silk here, or he could take some of these spices, maybe one, all the spices if he wants, or maybe one spice, one metal, and one wood, or something like that. You can also take the credit note here. So you take the credit note, uh, a piece of metal, and a piece of wood, or something like that. So he's basically got two choices, all of a bunch, or a smattering of variety of a uh, few. And remember, the variety is what you're kind of going for as well. And then the second place player can basically take two resources, and then the third place player can take one. Now, there are spots here for a fourth and fifth player, but if you're fourth or fifth, even if there's anything left, you don't get anything. So let's take a look at another area, and this time we're going to talk about combat. Now, to start the game, you're going to shuffle up one of these three uh, black sort of crisis tiles. Shuffle these up, and then you're going to flip one over. You're going to have that to sort of set up the combat to start the game. And then every round, you're going to draw one of these uh, from the white tiles and shuffle these up and you'll have one of these added here. Now here is one of the huge gripes about the game and I may not even be able to get this to focus. Now on these crisis tiles, it's not a huge deal on these crisis tiles, you basically look at it really close <laughs> and then try to figure it out, but it's going to tell you which of the different zones uh, to place these pirate tokens in. And these tokens here are dual purpose, so if they're on the board, they're basically pirates that you have to defeat and you can see a combat strength there, it's going to be two, three, or four most of the time they're three, but if players have these in front of them, they'll keep them hidden like a hand, they will use these to combat uh, the different things in the region here. So we're, let's say for argument's sake, to start the game off, we had a two here of the naval, and then a four here of the land combat there. So these will go face down, there'll be a supply of these off the side of the board, shuffled, and then dealt out according to these uh, tiles here. So what's gonna happen here this is very cool and very, very interesting. The first place player here that is winning the dominance here has to do the combat basically for everybody else. He's going to get the best reward, you know, choosing maybe all of these potteries or three of different ones. But he's also got to combat these here. So the first thing we're going to do before, before we resolve this zone is we're going to flip these up here like so. And so we see, okay, we've got, we've got a lot to deal with in this case. We've got four basically land combat and two points of sea combat or naval combat we've got to deal with. Now I should say to start the game players are going to be able to choose uh, two types of tokens uh, from the supply. So basically you're going to reveal the crisis tile, you set those out and then maybe I say okay I'm going to choose two navies uh, combats or two, two land combat. So you get a little bit to start with and there's some other abilities and things you can do to get more. So White's in here and he goes and says okay I, can, I have a choice now. I've revealed what's here. I can either run away and if you run away, you basically forfeit your your choice, but you get to keep your, your combat tokens. But you also get sort of a dishonor token, and you lose two points at the end of the game. So you'll take one of these. You don't really want to do that. Now, obviously, you can stay and fight. So what you need is you need to actually exceed the values here. So I need more than four worth of land fighting and more than two worth of the naval fighting. If I do that, I'll discard these tokens, and then I'll resolve like we normally would first place getting three uh, of a kind, or three different ones, or all the same, and then second and, and third. However, I can stay and fight. If I do stay and fight, and I can't defeat him, then I, I don't get my minus two. I have to discard at least one of these, and I maybe defeat one, so maybe I defeat the land one. But then it falls now to the second place player to defeat them. So this makes for a real interesting dynamic uh, as far as this whole worker placement thing goes, because you're going to see people sort of go in and try to get sort of a majority, but you realize they're going to have to fight things. Maybe see the other players don't have 
um, you know, a lot of weapons uh, at their disposal. So you'll probably maybe try to sneak in here with a sage. And maybe you've got a lot of weapons, but you can use your Pasha and your merchant other places. There's a lot of, of, of nice sort of, you know, jockeying and metagaming that's going to happen here with this whole combat and, you know, the different types of, of uh, workers. So here at the top of the board, you can see we have these different guilds here. And there's several different guilds, and they vary uh, greatly in the different activities that you can do. A lot of these are sort of typical worker placement things. But you also have these stacks of personalities here that you can grab. And so we've set up a four to five player game. There's basically two of each of these. If you play with less players, there's only one of each. And let's take a quick look at these. And this is the other sort of component complaint here. So you see you've got two of these guys. So these are available for people to purchase. And they're a stack that you can sort of sift through and look through. But you can see here, here's the cost there. And then here's the ability there. So if you can read that, I mean, good for you. But this is very, very small. It's going to take players a lot of time to... Uh, look through them and get familiar with them. And I will say that these are nicely outlined in the back of the book here. Um, so you can look through these as, you know, maybe it's not your turn. You can see they're uh, broken out. So you've got the entry guild here and you can see which ones are available in there. They show you how much they cost. Oh, they also show you the prestige points. So this is going to be worth points at the end of the game. Uh, but this is a very daunting task. And I would say if they do another printing in this game, which I, I think they should, they should probably do a nice, you know, kind of... Take another sweep across the graphic design. Now, I like the graphic design. I like the different, you know, uh, goods tokens, and I like the art on the, and these are nicely drawn. But just some of the font choices, just mainly on these tiles and then these tiles here. If they could redo those, I think we'd have, you know, we'd have a nice game that a lot of people would be very interested in. So there's a lot of different things here. So let me kind of quickly go over these. I'm not going to go over too many of these different uh, personalities because there is quite a few of them. And that is a great aspect of the game. There's a lot of little avenues to explore here. And a lot of these will kind of chain off each other. And if you look down here at the other end, there's a lot of these that will give you a uh, different amount of bonuses here. So like this guy will give you uh, 0, 3, or 5 points for extra workers and things like that. So when you go to these spaces, you basically have the choice of this top area here. Or, these, uh, or the title, or getting a title, so you could do this or this, and then you can optionally activate you know, one of these favors here in the middle. So let's just quickly go across all of these, and then I'll wrap up. So this one, when you choose the service here, this top area, you can do two, you have a choice of two things in this time. So you can take a look at any of the combat tokens uh, in any of the, one of the lands, so you can take a look, quick peek of there, or you can move uh, one of your pawns from uh, one spot to another that hasn't been resolved yet and that's only for a land area not for any of the guilds so you can do that and then this one here you probably can't read it here it's not too bad though it says copy another guild leader's uh, favor so any of these other favors you can copy um, so maybe you go here somebody's dominated here and you can't get in there to use that so you can go here and copy it but you still got to pay the cost of whatever it was all right the military area pretty self-explanatory you can go here if you dominate, you're in first place, you can draw three military tokens. Second place draws two, three draws one. You can get some more of those. And then you can choose the favor. Basically, this lets you trade any resource token for another military token. These three spots here are to get the different types of workers. So this one is where you can get a sage. This is where you can get a merchant. This is where you can get a uh, pasha. And then basically, whoever the higher dominance is going to pay less. So it's basically going to be five bucks for sage here. We're worth nine uh, if you're in third. And then you can see here, you can it's the same kind of thing. And then the favors here, you can basically pay two bucks and then you get a credit note out of the general supply. This one lets you trade any any token for any other token. So if I've got uh, a bunch of metal, I could trade a metal and get a little uh, pottery there to get my diversity up. Here, you can pay a buck and then you can get one of these political favor tokens. You get these and these are just basically worth one point at the end of the game. Oh, I forgot to mention here, uh, if you go here and you just take the favor, so remember, you, you have a choice of doing sort of this main action here or doing the uh, getting the title. Then, you know, the favor here, if you just go in there and take the favor, you're actually going to get the dishonor token here like so. And here's where you're going to change the turn order here. You go to the palace here. Uh, so there's no favor here, but basically the first three players of dominance will get to take one resource of their choice. And then this is where you resolve turn order. So first, second, and third. And then again, you can also purchase a, a title. And that's pretty much the game. You're going to place workers, you know, there's some sort of cat and mouse with resolving these in a certain order. You're going to go through all of these different abilities and things. 
and they they're all basically you know uh, you know what you would think so the military ones will help you with the fighting uh, the trade ones will help you with the getting the different resources and then there's sort of end game bonus guys that will combo off some of the stuff that you've drawn so a lot of the learning in the game is going to happen here with the different uh, personalities and the titles that you can get uh, but that is surrounded by I think a very very solid game uh, elsewhere out here and very different uh, interesting sort of worker placement uh, type of game okay I hope you enjoyed the overview um, I, this is a game that I was almost thinking about putting in my you know my top five whatever games of Euro games of of last year I couldn't really do that because the font issues is a big issue uh, it's not so bad on the crisis tiles you know that put out the different military every round that's not a big deal it's all color coded anyway uh, so that's not a big deal but on all of those special ability those titles those personality tiles I mean that's a huge deal there's so many of them and I really like that there's a lot of you know things you can do to explore with that but uh, it, but and it's a, it's a heavy learning curve but just it's just so the font is so small I like the font choices and the graphic design on the rest of the board uh, I mean it's a little bit hard to read but the fonts at least decent size and it's not really important to gameplay to add sort of the flavor and the theme of the thing but if they were to go do another print run I mean my recommendation would be to really revisit all of the tiles the crisis tiles and those those personality titles uh, but now you you've got to keep those personality titles small because you don't want to take it up like a giant spot of the board they look nice the art looks nice they look you know good where they're at on the board so I don't know what you would do because I mean, you could do icons, but, you know, I don't think that would really lend itself to this game. Uh, you know, maybe some kind of thing. It's just a matter, it's a matter of learning. So it's something you need to know beforehand. If you can deal with that, I think you're in for a very, very nice treat of a game. Uh, especially when you play four or more. Um, but uh, this is our sheet, and uh, it's very interesting. I really like a lot of the take, the different twists on worker placement. So if you are a worker placement fan... I would say definitely take a look at it if they're going to come in with another import or hopefully another print run or something like that. Then I think, um, you know, I think you, you you do yourself a favor to try it if you're really into this kind of thing. I would I would recommend it for sure. You can put up with the font stuff, um, but if you're kind of casually looking at this, then I would say you know maybe think twice because the font's going to be an issue. But if you really like the worker placement stuff, and I do, I like a lot of worker placement things, uh, then I think this is a very interesting game. And, uh, and uh, oh, you know, I never talked about how you, <laughs> you score points at the end of the game. Well, you get all the points from the different uh, the titles and things, but you also score points for the different family members. So, oh, off the top of my head, the Poshas are worth 5, 3, and 1. I think it's 5, 3, and 1 the same as the, the dominance that they apply. So, you want to build up a nice uh, uh, set of family members and things, too. So, it's a good game. I like the combat. I mean, the combat's really cool, and I like how when you're in first place, you got to choose... Do I want to choose a whole bunch to get a nice mass of things? And, and then this is sort of like weighing, you know, what you can do. Because I could get a bunch of the same over here and a bunch of the same over there. Then I'm doing really well. And you kind of like turn in these batches and stuff. So, uh, our sheet, definitely take a look at it. Hopefully it's uh, more available soon.